What is going on, Sensible Preppers? Yes, Prepper sir. School, volume, volume 25. 25. 25. Hope you guys are doing well. We've got a uh, number 25 on the Prepper School list. We will have this included in a playlist, and we try to hit different subjects that affect prepping. This is a fun one today. I think I'm so. I'm looking forward to this. I one. think so. We were actually thinking about doing just question and answers, kind of give you guys just open, which we will. We'll have some questions and answers. We'll take a couple of breaks. Uh, but then I just started thinking about some of the questions that are asked repeatedly uh, and some of the ones that are on a lot of people's minds. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully we're going to give you some thoughts. We're not going to, of course, this is 10 different items. So we're not going to give you a comprehensive of each one. Uh, but we will be giving you some ideas. And plus, guys, if you're in the comments and you see some things, jump in there and uh, give your two cents as well if you have some answers. Well, we have a lot of people that are, have yep. a lot of different experiences. So it's really important to uh, to get a lot of information out there. This is what we're doing. We're, we're a, a community. We're a prepping community. And the more that we're prepared, the better you're prepared, the better we're prepared. I mean, it's a double thing. So, um we just really appreciate Robbie Wheaton for being here from WheatonArms.com, Glock Aftermarket Parts, some of the best flat face triggers on the market, yes, sir. period, barrels, you name it, check it out. Uh, also does some custom gun work, uh, does excellent work. If you need an RMR cut, if you need bolts changed out in your, yeah. uh, he was a gunsmith for over 20 years. Uh, yes, he sir. was the grand poobah of the uh, <laughs> no, excellent, excellent work. And uh, has built 1911s and 2011s forever. Uh, just really knowledgeable. So, uh, and check out his YouTube channel. Absolutely. Yes, and, uh, sir. Robbie Wheaton. You can check that or Wheaton Arms. Yep. Find it either way. And uh, there's a lot of good information. Yeah. I've been really having a good time with the YouTube channel. Good. You know, it's, I've been able to kind of bring a unique insider's perspective in a lot of my gun reviews and and really kind of give you a lot, of, a lot more detail and in-depth descriptions about the inside of the firearms, how it works, what's good, what's not, and I help you make an informed decision on stuff before you buy it. Yeah, yeah, you do. And you do like the 10 reasons why you should buy this That's or, right. or whatever. Or 10 and, reasons why you shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the pros and cons. And it's, it's right. really good. It's really good. There's a lot of knowledge there. And we really appreciate Robbie for being here, but he's also a prepper. So obviously we're here to, uh, to have some fun. That's right. Also, we appreciate Sarah Mack. She's going to be answering some questions. If you have questions that you want to go ahead and ask, uh, you can you can start and she'll go ahead and start cataloging those. And then when we take a break, uh, we'll go to those. Uh, we also appreciate Sportsman's Guide for being our sponsor today. You get $20 off every $100 or more purchase using Such, no zero zero. And we use it all the time. Yep. And you got to check out the Buyers Club as well. Their Buyers Club, you get additional savings, as well as free shipping on any order over $49. Now, it's funny because we do this every week. Every week. But I probably purchase something every week <laughs> using my <laughs> discount code on Sportsman's Guide. Uh, so, yeah, really check them out. We really appreciate those guys, and they're just great to deal with. Uh, also, Exotac. Exotac makes some of the best fire starters out there. I mean, they, they are my go-to fire starters. Uh, they're made down in Georgia. They do a great job. They have some really unique type fire steels, different type fire starting things. And uh, check out Exotac. You get 20% off using Such 20 with the link down below in the description. Hottest hey. spark on the market. Hey, the hottest. Their fire rods are absolutely <laughs> awesome. So uh, we really appreciate Exotac as well. So let's get into some questions. What, what, the questions we get into, now Sarah Mack went, what? Yeah. We're not getting that yet. What are some, what are the top 10 questions that I get on a regular basis? We, 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 my little mouse, we, we, and his little mouse. Um, yeah, little mouse. <laughs> okay. Let's get serious here. Um, okay. Wrong show. I, huh? Wrong show. Oh, last, wrong yeah, show. That was last night. That's right. That was, no, Patreon live is anything but serious. We do a Patreon live every Monday night. We have a great time. We have a great crew that comes in. But uh, okay, so number one question: Where do I start with prepping? Yeah, with prepping. 
<laughs> not basket weaving. We're talking about prepping. Where do I start? Where do I start? And I'm going to tell you, it's huge because when you think about what you need to do to start prepping, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it is a very daunting thing. And, you know, even for us that have been prepping for a number of years, you know, you, you want to make sure that you have everything you need. And let me just say this. Number one, you will never have everything you need. No, no. You'll never have it. Uh, I don't care who you are. Well, maybe Bill Gates, if he wanted to dump a bunch of stuff into it. But, you, you know, the thing is, the fact is, is we don't know the future, mm -hmm. number one. And so I, one thing that I do is, is I, or I don't do, is I try to forecast what's going to happen. Yep. If I'm forecasting and I'm going, well, you know, I'm preparing for, you know, Doomsday Preppers was notorious for this. And it was the way the show was set up. But the, the one thing they would say is, you know, you know, why do you prep? And they would say, I prep for this reason. You know, well, to me, being a sensible prepper, if you're prepping for, let's say, uh, storms, environmental problems, let's say a hurricane, let's say tornadoes, yeah. let's say fire. Natural whatever. disaster. Any kind of net, thank you. Natural yep. disaster. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> the things that you're doing to prep for that, power outages, you know, possible damage to your place, mm -hmm. uh, you know, having some food on hand in case, you know, you can't get to the store, different things. That is the basis to get you started. If you're well prepared for a storm, you're on the road to being prepared as a prepper. Uh, and let's just talk about prepping, prepping. And I did a video about this, you know, what, who is a prepper? Who, what are we doing? If you, if you have car insurance, you're a prepper. That's right. If you have a spare tire that you check to make sure it's not flat, you know, you're a prepper, those things. But then being a prepper really kind of leads you into, I'm going to be prepared for what life throws at me. And, and so I base all of my prepping on the rule of threes. And that means it's three minutes without air, three hours. And this is how long you can live. Three minutes without air, three hours in extreme harsh conditions, be it cold or hot, mm -hmm. uh, three uh, days without water, three weeks without food, and then medical and uh, firearms flow in between. And so you could need those at any moment. So, And, you know, that's like with me, you know, if somebody asks me, where do I start? Yeah, I always tell them, listen, there's, you start with your essentials. You start with water, you start with food and you start with shelter. Those are the top three right, right. off the bat. Where do you, where do you start? You've got to have extra water. You've got to have extra food and you've got to have shelter to keep you warm and cold. And that covers the rule of threes, right? You know, food, water, and shelter right there. So if you're looking for a place to start, that's your starting point is water, food, and shelter. And two, don't panic. Now mm -hmm. we're going to get into a little bit more of that with some yep. questions. But the thing is, is when I go to the store or my wife goes to the store and she buys X, Y, Z, she buys some cans of food. She buys some, you know, a, a couple of gallons of water. You know, maybe she buys a, a book of matches or a box of matches. That little bit, let's say we spend 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. That puts us that farther ahead than we were the day before. That's right. So it's something that you just build to. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't have to buy it all at once. 99.9% .9 of us can't afford to go buy everything all at once. <laughs> you know, but that's where we start with a little bit every week, just a little bit, a little extra water, a little extra food, you know, maybe an extra blanket or a poncho liner or tarp or something like that to, to, in case we have a hole in our roof. But you just start with the little things and you just build from there. Right. And two, you know, do your research. Kind of check things out, see what people are doing. But mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you, a lot of times people can get really panicky. The one thing I've found is, is the more I'm prepared, the less I'm scared. Yep. Uh, you know, when COVID hit, which was one of those things that came out of nowhere and it was a whole different side of prepping. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people thought, oh, you know, we're going to have civil unrest. The dollar's going to drop. You know, we're not going to have power. We're not going to have internet. We had all those things. <laughs> well, and we did have some civil we, unrest. We ran out of toilet paper. We ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> Toilet paper is a big one. Probably so. the last thing on everybody's <laughs> list. You know, there's always going to be toilet paper. We'll never run out of toilet paper. Next thing you know, you're rationing squares. <laughs> <laughs> Open it won't break. <laughs> right. But uh, you know, and like ammunition, it all just dried up. You just never know where those things are going to hit. So the main thing is, is to think, okay, what is my base? You know, how how can I live? How's my pantry? Do mm -hmm. I have enough for a week? 
Do I have enough then for a month? You know, don't try to run out and buy a year supply of food right. first time for a family of four That's or right. greater. Mm -hmm. uh, go out and just start to do things. And then before long, you're going to be, you're going to find yourself going, okay, now, now what am I going to do? Let me see. I've got, I've got a nice supply of food. I've got a nice group, some water, or I know where my water source is. So I bought a filter. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big things that we're, we are strong about are, are Berkey yep. filter systems. <clears throat> and they're, they're just, you know, you pour the water in it filters it out. And then you have fresh water because you may have a stream or a pond or a lake or a river. And you're like, OK, I can get water from there. But you have cryptosporidium, you have giardia, you have, <laughs> of course, they just found a lake where they're continuing to find dead bodies because they drained the lake down. Oh my goodness. You know, the thing is, is <laughs> and this is a water source yeah. actually for some municipality. Wow. areas. So those waters, th that water needs to be filtered. And so that is a very important thing. And again, you have three days without water. Well, and that's the thing. You know, there's a there's an old saying, you never know what's upstream. Right. You know, right. and that doesn't matter if it's flowing water or still water that's in a pond or a lake. You never know what's upstream that's feeding into that water. And that's why you always need to filter it. Yeah. And water is a big one. Water's a big one. Medical supplies, also a big one having self-defense to protect your family mm -hmm. and your stuff. It's a big one. So just slowly just build as your budget comes together. Don't, and, and we're going to get into that as well, mm -hmm. because sometimes people freak out You're and they go, ahead. yeah, I know, I know, Robbie, I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> okay. That was number one. So where do I start? This is where you start. Rule of threes, get your basics and build on it. Just yep. build on it. That's right. Water, food, and shelter. Yeah, that's right. Good call. You're welcome. All right. So now this is the big one. Now, this is one that's funny to me. And this kind of correlates with the first one. Is it too late? Is it too late? to practice? When I first started YouTube, and it's been 14 years. Mm -hmm. uh, it, one of the things I did, I had my gun channel, Such, but I also had Sensible, Sur Sensible Survival was part of it. So I do some gun videos and I do some survival videos. And, you know, and I remember this one lady got in touch with me and she said, you know, I don't know what to do. I, I'm just, I'm all nervous. I, I, we, we've got a boat and we're thinking about selling it. What do you think? You think we ought to sell our boat and buy a bunch of preps? And I told her, I said, breathe, just breathe. I said, I'm not telling you not to do the things you need to do. I said, but I'm just telling you to just to relax a little bit. She said, I've seen all these videos where they're saying it's too late. It's too late. If you don't have your food, it's too late. Mm -hmm. That was 14 years ago. <clears throat> So I want you to put that in perspective, especially with the first uh, point that we made. The first question is, it's never too late. Well, <laughs> by the time it's too late, it's it's going to be a really rough time. Yeah. But you can do the things you need to do. It's not too late. Just get started. The only reason it's too late is because you never got started. Get well, started. You know, that's the thing. Things are right now, you know, with inflation and all things are more expensive. It cost more to buy the same goods that we could have bought a year ago or two years ago for half the money. But that just is what it is in the in the economy and the in the country and the world that we live in right now. Uh, things are more expensive because of inflation. And you have to budget for that and, and plan for that and know that maybe some of the things that you would normally go out and buy a lot of, you're only able to buy a few of those at a time now. And you know, but it's you it's never too late to get started. That's with right. just a few things every week. That's right. It's never too late to get started, uh, but get started. And let me just say this, guys, with everything that's going on around us right now, mm -hmm. uh, I really implore you to at least put some supplies back. Get your pantry full. You know, if you ever your refrigerator, of course, the thing is, if the power goes out, your refrigerator, but the power's not going out yet. Yep. <laughs> we still have power. We do. But I tell you. You know, I was I was watching the our local news yesterday morning, and that, that's really the only news that I ever watch is our our local news. Um, the rest of the news that I get from various sources on the internet, but I, I tend to watch my local news in the mornings when I get up. I'm having my coffee. I'll watch the news for a little while, just kind of see what's going on locally, and it gives me a feel for the pulse of my community. One of the things that they talked about several times on our local news yesterday was plan for power outages through the summer mm -hmm. that with uh, coal supplies being depleted, a lot of your power sources, your your uh, power producers going away from coal to renewable energy, that they weren't going to have the power to be able to to keep the grid up all summer. 
um, that we were going to see power outages through the summer and in the fall and the winter, as well as food shortages through the summer and the fall and the winter. So, you know, that was one of those things I've, I've kind of tossed around the idea about solar in the past. But when they started talking about that, I was like, you know, I've got my my deep freezers that we keep a lot of our, our food supplies mm. in. And I'm like, I don't want to lose my food supplies because of a power outage, because, you know, the this coal power plant over here has been shut down and they're replacing it with wind that produces one thousandth of the, the power that that coal power, that, that coal power plant produced. So I'm like, I'm going to start really digging into solar and figure out what I need solar wise to be able to provide power 24 hours a day to all of my deep freezers and convert my deep freezers over to 100% solar instead of pulling power from the power grid just for a long term to make sure that I have power to keep all of my stuff protected. So I do have food through the summer and food through the winter. Well, there's a big movement right now to do away with fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. And so, yep. and it's forced. I mean, it's coming from federal government. So they're, they're right. pushing, they're making a bunch of mandates. Well, you see gas prices at four or five, six dollars a right. gallon right now. We could be completely energy dependent here in the U S so, but that we're getting away from our questions. But the yep. thing is, is, it's not too late until it's too late. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and start getting yourself lined up. And then once you kind of get yourself with a baseline, it gives you a sense of peace. Then you can start focusing on solar power. We that's have a solar right. generator and that's important because with, um, with the electrical grid, we have so many people moving into our area. It's mm -hmm. been a strain on it, it as is. well. Uh, and a lot of areas are facing that. Okay. Now, number three, and this is a big one. This is probably the biggest the biggest. most asked question yes, that we get. Yes, it is get. probably the most asked. Is how do I get my family or my spouse on board? That's a tough one. That is. It is. Family kind of, you know, they kind of look at you sideways when you start talking about prepping. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they're like, that's my crazy uncle. See, I'm the crazy <laughs> uncle in our family. <laughs> Uh, now on my, on my wife's side, on my mom and dad's side, on, on my side, we're, we're kind of a little bit prepping crazy. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're okay. But, but the thing is, is a lot of times, thank goodness, they don't, they, they actually see the need, right? They just don't really do it. You know, they, they see the need, but they're not doing anything about it. But how do you get family? Um, you know, one thing to me and, and friends, friends are included in this as well. But one of the big things is not to get too passionate and overwhelm people. Because one of the things you want to do is you want to tell them all the reasons why they need to be prepping. Mm -hmm. You know, look at this, look at that, look at inflation, look at the gas prices, look at this. Man, you're crazy if you're not prepping. You need to be prepping. And they start looking at you and they start shutting down. They're like, okay, you need to back off a little bit, dude. Hope the brakes. Yeah. And to your wife, a lot of times, or your husband. It seems like most of the time it's the wife that's the more sensible one like that. And she's going, what are you doing? You know, because you're buying up guns and ammunition and you're buying camping supplies. And she's like, you're just using this as an excuse. Uh, you know, but but bring it in slowly, very rationally, mm -hmm. you know. And typically, if you can at least get them to where they are accepting, they may not be doing anything. They're accepting. Then you're 50. You're halfway there. You're 50 percent right. there. So just continue to do what you need to do, regardless of the criticism. And then when things start to happen, it's just like when COVID hit. A lot of people emailed me and said, man, I should have been listening to you. I should have been, you know, and you don't want to be the kind of person that says, I told you so, but they will be more and more warmed up. And the more things start to happen, if you take it kind of a logical, rational way, you know, we're, we've been putting back some food and we're doing some things. Yeah, don't you be know. that guy with that toilet paper roll going. <laughs> 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 the waste. <laughs> but uh, get rid of that waste. Yeah, oh. exactly. But, you know, the thing is, is, is don't get too passionate mm -hmm. and to your people. You may have an, an inner passion, but be careful when you're translating this and be rational and be logical when things start to happen. You know, just bring up something. And two, one thing that I usually do is I'll say like, man, food prices are going through the roof, yep. you know, and we may have some shortages. And I'll leave it at that. And then I watch their response. And typically, if they go, oh, yeah, you know, we've really been. Well, then you can kind of get a conversation going. 
Uh, and so lead into a conversation. Don't just go absolutely, you know, full on. Just go slow. You know, it's kind of like the guy who's trying to woo his girlfriend. You know, <laughs> it's kind of, you know, if you come all at once, there's like, whoa, get back from me, boy. But, you know, you just kind of work your way, you know. Uh, that's probably a bad example, but no, it's, it's true. Great, it's a great it's, example. It is. It's, it's a, a great example. example. You know, it's <clears throat> it's get your hands off me, dude. You know, I'm, you know, because what happens is, is it, it interferes with their ego. Mm. And so a lot of times, you know, they're like, well, I'm smart, you know, and just because you're prepping, you think you're so smart. So, you know, just very gently bring people in. It's funny. I have kids sometimes send me messages saying, you know, I'm really concerned about, you know, some of the things that are going on. And so, you know, my parents, don't, they don't see any need. And so, you know, and I'm like, I, you know, I don't really know what to tell them. You know, I said, well, you know, do what you can. Or the big thing is, is to continue to learn, mm -hmm. to learn about things and to increase your knowledge. Well, but, one of the big things that I found is if someone thinks it's their idea, they're more apt to pursue it. Yeah, that's true. So, you know, if if my wife thinks of something and she thinks that it's her idea, then she's much more <laughs> likely to pursue that versus if she thinks it's my idea and not hers. And maybe she doesn't want to go along with it as well because you know she's she's the big brain in the house so she thinks you know so you know you you oh i know you know i have yeah, a smart mind. yeah that's right <laughs> so you know a lot of times if you can make someone feel like it's their idea to maybe pick up a few extra groceries hey do you see what's going on with the news they're talking about we're gonna have some food shortages through the summer maybe we should pick up a few extra things every week at the store or you know you hear them talking about on the news this morning the power outages that are coming up this summer, maybe we should look at getting some solar or, alter, or alternate uh, power supply and just let them let them dwell on it and form their own opinion and then follow up a couple of days later. Hey, what'd you think about that? And, you know, just gentle, gentle reminders to help someone move in that direction where they feel like it's kind of their idea instead of you trying to push it on them. Or sometimes you can have friends that actually kind of start talking about it mm -hmm. in a more rational way yep. where you saying it may not go over so well, right. but exactly. when somebody else says it, it's kind of like, and that's one thing that happened in our prepper group. Mm -hmm. We had our prepper group came together and yet there were some wives in there. And I'm just going to say it. There were some wives in there that were a little bit skeptical. I mean, they were, they were supportive, right? But they weren't on board. Mm -hmm. Then after a couple of weeks, they began to get on board. And the next thing you know, man, they're, they're doing everything. I mean, they're out there doing their thing. Another thing too is, is what do they want to focus on? Right. So sometimes, you know, you may want to say, well, what do you want to focus on? I and mean, we're mainly talking about spouses here in a sense, mm -hmm. but you know, what do you think we ought to be doing and let them kind of go, well, I don't really think we need to be doing anything. Well, then, you know, you have to do what you have to do, Right. but gently work into that. Right. Okay. Let's go to number four and then we're gonna get some questions. Um, and this is to bug out or to bunker in. Uh, and that's a big one. A lot of people, you know, the, I remember this one little guy, he caught, he got in touch with me and he said, me and my dad, we had this place down in Alabama and they were, they were up in like Kentucky and they said, we got this place as our hunting lodge and we've got all of our supplies stored there and we're ready to go, man, if anything hits, we're going to take off down there and we got all of our supplies there. And I just said, well, what do you have at home? Well, we don't really keep that much at home. I and mean, we have a few things. I said, what if you can't get to your location? Mm -hmm. What if you can't get to it? Listen, to me, it's crazy to make your plan only around bugging out. Your home where you have supplies, you have things to ride out some storms, you can do some things. But you need to have a bug out plan because bug out is glorified refugee. Mm -hmm. And you may get on the freeway. You've been on the freeway before when things are busy and it's locked down. Listen, if we have a catastrophic problem or some kind of major issue, yep. we could have lockdowns on the highways. And the freeway would be the last place that I would go. Yeah. You're vulnerable. <clears throat> you know, your family's out there. You can't carry all the supplies you need. Yep. So make your number one plan uh, in your location. Now we're going to address on down about apartments and that's a whole different deal, right? That's a, that's a different deal. But when, if you have a home and you have a place where you have your supplies, that is your place. That is your fortress. Mm -hmm. That's where you have, you, you're familiar with the area, you know, your neighbors, you know, you're going to have a lot more success being in a community than you are just out on the road. Yep. You're vulnerable. And, so, and it's nice to have an alternate location to go to. If you have, a bunch of civil unrest in your area where you live, 
or there's something going on to where you can't stay where you are in your home, it's nice to have an alternate location. But if you do have an alternate location, have multiple routes to get you to that location. Don't don't just be like, well, I'm just going to jump on the interstate, zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going to be there in two hours. Have some alternate routes that's going to take you on some secondary roads, some back roads, ways to get around the interstate that will still get you to your destination. That's right. That's a good point. And maps, having mm -hmm. maps. maps Always. Are important. Okay, let's go ahead and go to some questions, and then we're going to go back to the list. Uh, Eric says, good day, gents. My question is hygiene kits in get home bags and bug out bags. I think it's an often overlooked item in one's loadout. Could you give suggestions and options? Yes, definitely. Hygiene is yep. going to be key because mm -hmm. you don't want to get infections. You don't want to get sick. You want to keep yourself clean. Uh, you know, getting a small one of those little small toothbrushes, you know, they have them or take the toothbrush, take a toothbrush and cut it off. Right. And have that little part, you know, you can slip it down in a bag. Make sure you have your soap. You know, soap's even more important than just shampoo, but shampoo would be nice. It is. But in a lot of cases, you may not be in an area where you're able to take a bath in a creek or a river or you don't feel safe taking a bath, you know, being away from your gear and stuff. So in a situation like that. There's the sanitary wipes that you can buy. Mm -hmm. Get the sanitary wipes. You can sponge yourself off with the sanitary wipes to get yourself cleaned up a little bit and still, you know, maintain your hygiene. So I'm I'm a big fan. Every one of my bug out bags, my get home bags has sanitary wipes in it. I don't have soap in my bags just because there's a lot of instances where you may not be able to use soap. So I keep the sanitary wipes in all the bags just because they're they're easy, they're quick, and I can I can use them on the move. That's right. That's a, that that's something I keep in mind too. Yep. It's definitely like with your hands. Let's say you've been doing something and yep. it's not that sanitary, then you're going to go eat. You need to make sure you're able to wash your hands, even at home. Mm -hmm. Even at home, it's really important to have those because you know water could be shut off for some reason. Uh, Ernie Andrews asks, "I'm a mile." From Moffett Field, a target. Only death awaits me here. How do I know when and how to get out? Well, you watch. You watch things. You see how things are going. Uh, you know, things start to really ramp up. It's just like I, I say with, you know, civil unrest. If you live in a city and there's stuff happening mm -hmm. and there's, there's riots going on around you, if nothing else, plan a weekend to go somewhere. Take your family. Say, you know what? We're going to take about a three or four day trip. Yep. Get the heck out. Go to that other location before things get kind of crazy. Uh, same thing with this. You know, things start to kind of get a little bit on edge, you know, and we're maybe facing some definite threats. Then, you know, watch how things go. Uh, you know, we can't always predict the future, but, you know, we can kind of forecast a little bit and say, hey, things are getting really squirrely. Yeah, because, I mean, the... In in the end, if it comes down to it and you hear the alarms go off and you start getting notifications on the news, you've got about 15 minutes and it's probably going to be too late for you at that point. Yeah, it's uh, and, and have a plan. And two, the problem is, is the roads are going to be just jam packed. They will. That's right. So, um, you know, I would just watch for signs, see what's going on. And then you have to decide, am I willing to abandon what I have here? Mm -hmm. And do I have a staging out somewhere else? Right. Again, traffic and all those kind of things. But if, you know, if you plan ahead, it's one of the things that we always talk about, you know, as things are here, people are kind of just humming along. Everything's fine. Once people start to panic, once the, the curve starts, then it's too late because then everybody's, mm -hmm. you know, going crazy. And so you want to get it before it hits that up ramp. So whatever you're doing, and this applies to anything. Whether it's buying toilet paper, food, you know, everybody's kind of humming along. Well, we still got food in the grocery. It's a little bit, you know, and then all of a sudden the shelves go empty and yep. everybody panics. And that's you do not want to be in that place. So when you're in a dangerous area and you need to get out, you need to start watching and forecasting as people are doing this. And another thing to think about is knowing that you have a 15 minute window. Where within that 15 minute window can you go? that's going to get you out of the immediate blast area and provide you some protection, you and your family, some protection, start looking for that area now where you can go and identify it, identify multiple routes to get you there. That'll be under that 15 minute window. Yeah. I think it's, you need to be 38 minutes or 32 <clears throat> minutes uh, or 32 miles away from right. like a nuclear facility. That's going to possibly go. You need to be within, you need to be outside of 32 miles, but generally your immediate blast area where, 
you know, the survivability rate is zero is about two to three miles. All right. So if you can get outside of that and have a way that you can shelter in place to protect you from the alpha and the beta and the gamma rays, then your your survivability rate really goes up once right. you get outside of that immediate blast area. Right. There were a lot of a lot of instances in uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima where people survived mm -hmm. and got out and and lived to be old old. Right. So you know the big thing is is being a little proactive. Mike Holmes asks, "What would you recommend to do for laundry in a grid down situation? What tools could I buy to accomplish this?" Well, you can get one of the uh, the old, old washboards. washboards. In fact, mm -hmm. we have one. <laughs> uh, washboards are great because it just breaks up, you know, any kind of soil or whatever's on there. Uh, of course, you know, you're going to be going down to water uh, that may or may not be clean and clear, but uh, at least you can get your clothes. And then, of course, having you know. Clotheslines, washboards, and clotheslines, and right. uh, and go back to the old old way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, twenty mule team borax and, <laughs> and whatever else. You know, some powder that would be great to have as well. Um, Something good to stock up on and, and save as well. You can you can dilute it. You can use it to wash yourself. You can wash your clothes with it. So, you know, borax is a great great source to be able to stock for for a cleaner. Right. It also keeps insects away. It does. That's right. Uh, Chosen Preach asks, I am a female. Is a Fury knife a good knife to have for tactical preparedness? I can't find a Mora knife anywhere. Amazon, where I am, is sold out. Wow. Wow. Mora's. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, if uh, just Fury. I don't, I'm, are you aware I'm of Fury? I'm, I'm not necessarily no. familiar with that particular knife. Uh, the one thing I do like about the Mora's, uh, and you can go on Smoky Mountain Knife Works. And you can order because typically they have them. They have a mm -hmm. huge selection of Mora knives, any kind of knife, all the way down from the twelve dollar one to the hundred and twenty dollar one. Right. <clears throat> but honestly, the twelve dollar one will work very well. Um, but yeah, you can go on. You can you can find those online, not just necessary necessarily you know Amazon. Amazon. Mm -hmm. So don't limit yourself there. But um, yeah, and two, you can get one with a fire starter that's in the handle, and you can mm -hmm. pull it out. And, uh, and you can use that and it gives you double capability. But as far as just basic survival, people, and I myself am included in that, love more knives. They're just great, inexpensive knives, but they're super good quality. So, um, and, and it's, that's not necessarily a tactical knife. Uh, when it gets into the ta more tactical knives, I'm a big fan of the Essie, the Essie knives, whether it's the SE 3 or the SE 4 Some of the other ones are too big, but they're a little bit more expensive. I mean, they get into the $100 plus range. But more knives, um, in fact, I did a whole video on a, on doing all kind of uh, little survival kits using the, the Mora knife with wrapping them with paracord, duct tape, uh, putting fire starters with them. I did a whole, and then two, you can patina them. There's so many things you can do to them. They're, they're really cool knives. But yeah, I would I would look at Smoky Mountain. But honestly, when down in Argentina, when they had their economic collapse in the book, Modern Survival Guide for the Coming Economic Collapse, the Modern Survival Guide for Coming Economic Collapse, it was, you can put for foul, F-E-R-F-A-L in any search, and that book will come up. And he did real events. And the crazy thing was he had a Rambo cheap survival knife, mm. one of those cheap made in China. He said that got him through the entire event. So I wouldn't be too, too focused on like the ultimate best. But uh, yeah, if you're looking for more knives, check out Smoky Mountain or there's probably other sources out there where you can find it. Yeah. Like if I'm looking for something on the Internet, that's if I go to my normal suppliers, they don't have it or whatever. I always type in whatever the name is, like Mora Knife in stock, best price and search for it that way. And a lot of times that will pull up companies that have it in stock and it's also going to pull up companies that have it at the best price okay let's go to one more question then we're going to jump back we're we don't want to run out of time to get our uh gary hernandez self-defense and urban survival ask what do you think about a walking cane for self-defense as a gray man tool oh i think that's that's mm -hmm. an excellent tool it can separate you from an attacker i mean it's something that people see um, you know, and it also gives you a little bit of vulnerability as far as you're walking around. Yep. So they're not perceiving you as a threat. One of the big things, though, is to train with it and know how to use it, because you don't want to be walking around with a cane, have to use it and have it taken away from you and used against you. <laughs> so if you're going to use one, make sure that you get some training with it and really know how to use it properly to to retain it and to use it effectively. Good, 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 good. 
Uh, okay, number five, how do I form a prepper group? Now, this goes back to a little bit similar of dealing with family and friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, friends are going to be a little more open because they're usually more like minded than you, you know, that you that like you. Uh, but forming a prepper group to me uh, is is important because what happens is, um, you know, if you're a lone wolf and I got somebody sent me a message one time about this and just hammered me about it, said, well, I've been doing lone wolf for 40 years and I can do blah, 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 blah. And I said, yeah, you're one point one percent of the population. So uh, one thing that's very important, just like that book I just mentioned, communities coming together. That was mm-hmm. vital. Now, approaching people about prepping, you know, is can be difficult. But, uh, you know, if you know some people and you're starting to talk a little bit about prepping and you know that they're doing some things, start networking together with them. We meet every Sunday night. We have a great group. We, we always we have dinner. We, we meet together um, and we just discuss things. And yet we're building great relationships. Mm-hmm. But also your neighbors are also good choices to be able to build that. And one thing is, too, you plant a few seeds and then they may not bite, but then when things start to ramp up, they're going to come to you and they're going to go, hey, uh, the big thing is, is keep your lips shut about all the things that you have. You don't want to create a target, you being a target. But definitely uh, having a prepper group is important, but going to places and doing things in your area where people tend to be more prepper minded. Mm-hmm. And that would be, you know, your gun ranges or, you know, shooting clubs. Obviously, people like that st- not all of them. A lot of guy, gun guys could care less about it. They don't, they're not really thinking about it. But if you can work that and then, you know, go to Tractor Supply or, or you know, and you get friends and, you, you know, you just start to kind of slowly kind of talk about it and see who bites. One of the things that uh, a lot of people will say, oh, yeah, yeah, I want to do it. I'm going to do it. And then they never do anything. Mm-hmm. Don't spend a lot of energy on those people because you can't push a rope. I tell you, one of the best places that I found to find new people for your group is in church. Yeah, church is definitely lots of lots of like minded people uh, that you're going to find in churches. Yeah, I agree. Okay, let's. uh, Okay, well, that was that was number five. That was number Uh, five. And and we've done a whole video on how to form a prepper group, Mm -hmm. so you know you can check that out. There's a little hourglass, and or not hourglass, but a little magnifying glass. Just put form a prepper group, and you can find these videos on there. Um, okay. This is one of my favorites here. Yeah. And this is one that actually we did a couple of weeks ago, mm-hmm. how to prep on a budget. Yep. Uh, you know, guys, it is expensive if you're out buying stuff. Uh, so you're wanting to look for ways to be able to cut back on your thing. And actually Robbie, it was Robbie's idea to bring this one in yep. last time. How to squeeze a penny until it bleeds. Right. You know, I mean, that's, that's really what it comes down to stretching your dollar as far as it will possibly go and using your money as a effective tool for you and not just as expendable cash. Right. Because a lot of times, you know, people <clears throat> used to say to me that, or, you know, especially online, cause they don't mm-hmm. know me, you know, but they would say, you know, man, you must be rich. You got this, you got that. I said, no, I've been doing this for a number of years. Right. And two, instead of going to the movies every weekend or going out to a huge dinner, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I would forego that. And we would say, let's go to the store and let's buy right. some, some groceries. Uh, another thing that's a really great resource are like um, resale shops or Goodwill and different places like that. Uh, Sarah Mack and I, we went to a, we decided to do a video on buying up prepping supplies at the local Goodwill. And I told her, I said, oh, it'll probably take us three or four trips. Yes. First trip, we had a buggy full of mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, we even had a water <clears throat> filter. We had a Berkey yeah. water filter in one of the sport bottles. We had candles. We had boots. We had, I mean, it was all kind of That's stuff. Right. So, you know, go to those better, that those that are in really nice communities, go to those That's type right. thrift stores. <clears throat> your thrift stores in your better areas and flea markets. Flea markets are another Big. great, great place to find items on a budget. Right. You can find used items. Um uh, have a, have a yard sale or go to a yard sale, but have a yard sale and generate cash to be able to use. Get on Facebook Marketplace, sell things. We just got on there and sold mm-hmm. one of our cars and did very well by doing that, you yep. know. And so, you know, get on, get on those, utilize those areas. Uh, and Facebook Marketplace is a great place to find things and to sell things. That's right. But take the extra things that you have, get rid of them, sell them to friends, you know, make some cash, generate mm-hmm. some money. But one of the big things is, guys, is, you know, don't go to Disney World right now. Of course, don't go to Disney World anyway. But don't go to Disney World and, you know, and spend, you know, $5,000 
when and then complain because you're not prepared or have money to be able to spend on your preps. Right. That's right. So there are all there are multiple ways to make money or to save money uh, whether you're going to buy. And those are great ways to do it. Uh, so prepping on a budget. All right. Uh, let's see. Should I max out my credit card? Number seven. I'm telling you, I've had more people. Yep. That, yep. Man, I need to go out and max out my credit card. Listen, you know, I had people telling me that um, 14 years ago when I started doing YouTube. Man, I'm going to go out and max out my, I'm going to buy a bunch of silver. I'm going to max out my credit card. And then when the economy collapses, I don't have to pay that back. I mean, that's their mindset yeah. or whatever. It'll ruin my credit. So what? Listen, you, you are going to screw up yourself because nobody can forecast exactly what happens. Uh, don't get yourself strapped. Don't, in fact, pay off your credit card. Well, you know, that's that was one of the things that I was going to say is if you're in debt for anything, you know, debt is a form of slavery, right? If you're in debt, you're working to pay someone else. You're working for someone else and giving someone else your money. If you're in debt, if you have debt, Work to pay that debt off as quickly as you possibly can so you are financially free and not tied or a slave to the debt that you have. Right. That's right. So don't go and go beyond your means. Mm -hmm. Again, a little bit every week, a little bit before long, you start going, okay, I'm in good shape. I'm doing well. I'm managing my money better because I'm using it for things that I need. Right. And this is the other thing, guys is prepping, you know, yeah, you have a bunch of food. Guess what? Nothing happens. You eat it. You still got food. But that's right. I don't think that's really going to be the option. Yeah. I think we're going to, I mean, we're seeing too yeah. many signs right now. <clears throat> we are. Too that's many right. signs with the fertilizer, with, you know, seed, with arable land. I mean, with, you know, all these different things that we're having problems, uh, food storage units and, and storage areas mm -hmm. catching on fire. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're, we're really getting ourselves in, into a box and uh, into a corner, and we've got to really be careful. So, uh, guys, it's important to manage your finances. Well, you know, one of the big things that I see is, you know, around this time of year, every year, people do their taxes. They, they submit them. They get their, their tax money back, their free money <laughs> that, that they, they take, and they just blow it on a vacation or whatever, on, on stuff that you don't really need. Take that money that you get from your tax returns and put it toward the things that you need. Put it toward extra food. Put it toward water. Put it toward shelter. Put it toward paying off debt. And use that money as a tool instead of just going out and blowing and wasting that money. It's some of the best advice that I could give you. Right. That's right. Okay. How do I prep for kids? And this could also be for pets. Mm -hmm. Pets are another one that a lot of people have. Um, you know, guys, number one, it's according to the age group that your kids are in, yeah. but it's important if they are old enough to handle maybe a knife or even a flashlight and some, uh, if they could actually light them, light a fire, of course, you're going to have to get them into their, probably their late, you know, early adolescence That's or right. late teens. 10, 10, 11, 12 to start teaching them, you know, fire starting skills and stuff like that. But the one thing you need to remember is, is that you can be separated from your small child. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that they have at least part of the basics, a good flashlight, a rain jacket, you know, different things like that, that they can deal with. And until you can get to them. A good backpack that fits them. Yeah. You know, not, right. not a, you know, one of your old leftover backpacks that you're not using for anything that hangs down to the back of their knees. And, you know, they can't carry that for long distances or even short distances. Get them a smaller backpack, something that fits their size and their frame. And when they outgrow it, you know, either pass it down to one of your younger kids or sell that one on Facebook Marketplace and take that money and turn it back over into a bigger backpack that fits them. Right. But you, where the age groups are and what they can handle, mm -hmm. you need to have them as prepared as possible. That's right. Uh, I'll never forget, we were at Disney World. This has been like 15 years ago. And we were sitting there in, on these benches mm -hmm. and the kids were playing. In fact, one of our sons was playing over across the way because it was a big open area. Then all of a sudden these doors opened up and all these people poured through and my son was gone. Yep. You know, And so I got through the crowd and I got him. But you can be separated from your child just like that. That's right. And you need to they need to have some abilities to be able to survive. 
at least to instruct them. You don't want to bring fear on your kids, but you want to give them the tools to survive. Once they get a little bit older, they need to definitely be, you know, how do I work a fire steel? Mm -hmm. You know, what can I do with my flashlight to signal, you, uh, you know, having the rain gear, having yep. those things. And we did a video on kids survival supplies, even yeah. simple things like, you know, where's the rally point if we have a house fire? Uh, yeah. Where are we going? Yeah. Everyone goes to the same place. That way everyone knows that everyone's out and nobody's trying to run back in the house because little Timmy decided to go to the backyard instead of the mailbox. And then you get a family member that runs back in the house and may or may not make it back out. Which that actually happened. It happens uh, regularly. Yeah, yeah. There was a, there was a family that got out of a burning house and their smallest child, they couldn't find him. The dad runs back in, the house collapses on him. The child was behind the house. Mm -hmm. So again, you're right. Have those rally points. Yep. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and go to a couple of more questions. And um, and we'll we'll get to it. And then we've only got a couple of more to finish up, but we're getting getting close on time. Again, we really appreciate Sportsman's Guide. You get a twenty dollars off every hundred dollar or more purchase using Sooch, and great resource. Uh, Mr. Sharkboy asks, "What is your advice on people judging other people for prepping?" Well, people are always going to judge you for everything. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is if it's prepping. Your house isn't big enough. Your house is too big. Your car is too small. Your car is too big. Don't worry about what other people think. Okay. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, don't worry about what other people think. Take care of you and your family That's first right. and foremost. That's right. Don't let people push you. Negatively I, influence you or your behaviors. I have a good friend of mine that has a pretty decent YouTube channel, pretty mm -hmm. strong YouTube channel. And a few years ago, he came to me and this guy's a vet. I mean, he's a special forces guy. Yeah. And he came to me and he goes, these people are being so mean. I'm just, I don't know if I can take this any longer. I'm not going to. And I looked at him. I said, you ain't he. I said, what do you mean? I said, don't, people are going to be negative. Listen, yeah. you want to find out about negative? Look through the comments, especially mm -hmm. on my suit channel. You know, look through the comments. I mean, you know, there are people on social media are horrible. You've got to have a tough skin. You've got to have it. And you, because like Robbie said, and that he hit the nail on the head is it's for you and your family. Don't let them lead you to destruction because of the way they think about you. I, I could care less, honestly. And believe me, I have people that I have people sometimes that I've known for years and they'll go, man, that suit is crazy, isn't he? You know? And then it comes back around to me. Right. Yeah. Uh, Marilyn Brower asks, what can you do to prepare for solar flares and EMPs? Uh, you know, one of the things is, you know, Faraday cages are mm -hmm. great, but honestly, you know, what are you going to do? Carry your phone in a Faraday cage yeah. and about the moment you pop it out. When even then, a lot of that stuff is... Is subjective because it hasn't truly been tested in a real world environment. So it may work. It may not work. You know, it's kind of a, kind of a, you know, the, the $6 million question is it, is, are these things going to protect my electronics? Are they not going to protect my electronics? You, you just don't know. Um, you do what you can to protect what you can. And some of that stuff is really just kind of up in the air and hope for the best. Well, one thing too, is like with cell phones, because that's one of the things I really think mm -hmm. about, you know, uh, my <clears> cell phone, is uh, the, the power, I mean, the uh, the towers may be out because mm -hmm. of the solar flare, you know, or because of an EMP. But one thing I think is there are some really cool uh, two-way radios. And, yeah, and these yep. have been tested, these Faraday bags. Mm -hmm. I, I've got a, some of these Faraday bags, yep. and they have been tested. I've done some testing, uh, and it's about the waves, the right. certain waves, the way they move, and this blocks that wave. It keeps it from hitting. So take some, uh, uh, you know, like a an emergency radio, then one of the crank ups that has rechargeable batteries as a solar panel, throw that in there because mm -hmm. communication is going to be important. Yep. Also, like Robbie said, two way radios, you know, there's some things like that, maybe a tablet, maybe you could throw a tablet in there if internet is even available, but at least you can pull that back out and use it. You can recharge it solar, take your solar uh, battery backups. And, and I don't know that they may have anything that would be affected, but throw mm -hmm. a battery backup in there. And, uh, you know, and, and keep certain items in those bags and it'll at least put you ahead of everybody else. You know, even to have a cell phone, it's like one of those, you know, just an extra cell phone. Yeah. Throw it in there and, you know, and then if you need it, if Internet's up, you're going to be able to use it. So and one of the big things that a lot of people don't think about is transportation. Yeah, if, oh, yeah. if there is a solar flare or an EMP, all of our electronics in our vehicles are going to be they're going to be shut down. But one thing to consider 
is your older vehicles that use points uh, for your ignition system or a, a magneto for your ignition system, they're not affected by solar flares or EMPs. Those vehicles still function, they still run, they still work perfectly in the event of a solar flare or an EMP. So if you're in a financial position to where you can buy an older vehicle and, and just drive it every now and then just to keep it from, you know, the carburetor from clogging up with old gas, an older vehicle that still works on points that is all mechanical and not electrical will get you through a solar flare or an EMP attack and you'll still have reliable transportation. And there are some there are some people out there that do some parts that mm -hmm. attach to your vehicle that supposedly protect it, right. but it's still theory. Yep. Okay. Um, let's go ahead. Okay, one more question, then we're going to finish up our list. Um, Tommy Stacker asks, where do precious metals play in prepping? Oh, big time. You know, uh, Robert Kawasaki, um, he is big on God's currency mm -hmm. and silver, gold, uh, Scottsdale silver, Scottsdale mint. They are excellent to deal with. If you're looking to buy some precious metals, I've known uh, those guys for over 10 years. Uh, and one thing that I do right now, silver actually is down. Mm -hmm. Now's the time to buy it because whether you were in the Indies Mountains as a Peruvian 2,000 years ago or you were in Greece, they were mining for silver and gold. That's right. <laughs> and that's a that's something that will remain constant. Uh, and it what it does is it protects your wealth. One of the things that happened down in Argentina when they had their collapse is that people that had precious metals, the, their uh, peso went to nothing. The gold and silver prices went through the roof. They were able to pay off houses and mm -hmm. property and do things. Uh, and so there are there is a huge uh, plus. You can take a silver dime or a silver quarter. And in, at one point here in the U.S., there was a time where the economy, I think it was around 2008. We had right. that big. There were stores that actually opened up that were accepting silver coins for uh, for tender. And, you know, and it gives you a valuable asset. Mm -hmm. And right now, again, silver is really low. I think it was $21 an ounce. It got up to $30 an ounce yep. early, earlier this year or last year, later last year. Uh, so now's the time to buy it because something is suppressing it, but it will go through the roof if things keep continuing to, to go like they are. Well, and that's, a, that's the thing. The term gold standard is a real thing. The, the price of gold in the United States is the same price of gold in Russia or China or India or anywhere else in the world. The gold standard is a set value and a set price. So no matter what your paper currency is currently worth, that gold, that gold standard is going to be worth the same no matter where you go in the world. And, and I would recommend having some <clears throat> cash, uh, you know, having some cash. But the mm -hmm. one problem is, is inflation will yep. eat that up. Two, if something really bad happens, you may, that cash is not going to be valuable. It's not going to be that valuable for right. long. So gold and silver, it retains its value. It gives you something to be able to trade and barter with. And that's one of the big things about it. You can't have everything you you need, but if you have a, a some silver and gold, you're going to be able to barter it for things that you need and a multitude of things. I may have a shovel and I need an ax, but the guy that has the ax doesn't need a shovel. With silver, I can come in and say, well, you know, maybe we can do some trading and then he can use it to buy a chicken, mm -hmm. you know, so it, you, you can use that as currency. Okay, let's go to our last two points. Uh, number nine is apartment living or apartment prepping. Uh, there's some there's some disadvantages there. You have a limited space, mm -hmm. and that's probably the biggest. Uh, you know, but you have limited space. You have to utilize the space that you do have. You know, figure out how long can I live in this apartment right. if I'm locked in. China, they just had those lockdowns. Mm -hmm. People were just stuck in their apartments. You know, whatever they had in there was what they had. Uh, so you know, it's it is a something to be concerned about. You, there's only so much water that you can store. Right. Only so much food, but store what you can. And if you need to kind of change a few things around to be able to store more, I think it's important to have at least a, a decent supply to get you through at least a couple of weeks to right. a month. And, and then you need to, especially in an urban situation where there could be civil unrest, you need to have a backup plan to get out. That is one place to me that if I lived in an apartment, I would definitely have a bug out location. It could be my my uh, my mom and dad that live right outside the city, mm -hmm. you know, which could be, you know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes in a car. <laughs> it could take you longer <clears throat> on foot. So have some plans, but get yourself as prepared as you can in the apartment 
but then have some locations and some places to get out. But remember, you're going along like this. When things do this, it's too late. So when things, when you start seeing things and everybody else is kind of asleep and you're going, this is getting a little bit dangerous and maybe you're seeing a little peak, that's the time to make, to take action. And, you know, even if it's for a weekend, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going, I'm going to go see my brother over in Toledo, you know, for a couple of weeks or, right. or a weekend and see how things go. So apartment living, and we're going to be doing a video about that. We're going to do a dedicated video talking about apartments and, you know, and, and urban living and how you may need to get out. Okay. Uh, the last one is why are you so paranoid? <laughs> why are you so, why are you even prepping? What the heck? You know, man, nothing's happened in the past hundred years except for the great depression, but still people live, people did, you know, they had to back it way down. Uh, but you know, the great depression is a great example of why oh, you yes. do need to prepare. Millions <clears throat> lost their jobs. People were standing in soup kitchens. People were were just under. They they were being their lives were being directed. And the people though that had had things put aside, people mm -hmm. lived on farms. People that could produce things. People that had stuff put back. They could. They did a lot better off than yep. those people. Those That's other right. people. And, and you know why do we prep? Well, good night. Let me. Let, we can make a bucket list. And I know you guys are going. Yeah, we know why. But you know, inflation. You've got war in Europe, which who knows how that's going to go. There's mm -hmm. a, even a potential of nuclear, um, you know, nuclear threat, nuclear Absolutely. threats. And then you've got you know North Korea that's doing things. You've got China that's talking about. You know, they're really wanting <clears throat> to take Taiwan. What is mm -hmm. our reaction to that? The inflation, massive inflation. gas prices, mm -hmm. food shortages. COVID rearing its ugly head again or something much yep. worse. Power blackouts. Power blackouts. And you not know, to mention natural disasters. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just your standard fire natural disasters. season. You know, you've got your, your fire season out West, you know, there's this huge area in New Mexico right now that's burning several smaller fires throughout the West and the Midwest. Um, hurricanes, tornadoes, all the tornadoes in Kansas a couple of weeks ago, over a hundred in 48 hours earthquakes you know we had another earthquake here in south carolina just a couple of days ago we've had that's probably 25 or 30 earth small earthquakes that we've had in south carolina in the in the last 12 months so you know those are all things to kind of open your eyes and say hey i need to get started now because it's never too late until it's too late and when you understand how to answer that question, yep. you're, you're able to talk to your neighbors and your friends mm -hmm. and your family and your spouse, and you're able to form a prepper group. And so these things lead. The one thing about a lot of these just natural disasters is that we're going to be less and less able to assist. Right. The more things kind of we the more problems we have. Uh, and then, of course, civil unrest, which we're seeing right now, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, and then, of course, crime is increasing. So there's a lot of threats, you know, and just like Nirvana, the song, it said just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not watching you. And so, guys, you know, you may be paranoid, but it doesn't mean you have a good reason to be. Um, but paranoid is not what you need to be. You need to be prepared, prepared. and mm -hmm. then you're not scared. You need to have some things in place. You need to be thinking ahead. Just think about this. If you have thought about this ahead, if you have a few supplies put back, you're way ahead of the crowd. And so just take comfort in that, but then build and grow the things that you have. Okay. I think we're around the, uh, we're getting close to time. So um, we really appreciate you guys. The great questions. I hope this kind of helped kind of put some perspective on some things. Uh, we will be expanding some of these in the next few weeks. Definitely apartment uh, prepping is one of those big ones. Uh, but a lot of these will be, this will be on a playlist. Mm -hmm. It's funny to me, but we'll put this out and we'll have a, a, a bunch of people watch it, but then it grows exponentially. People go back and watch it and you can use this as a resource, but guys don't panic. Just do what you can. That's all you can do, but do something. And that's, that's the big thing I'm going to leave you guys with. Uh, we really appreciate Sportsman's Guide for sponsoring today's episode. They have a lot of great military surplus. I mean, from around the world and prices are reasonable. Mm -hmm. It's a great way to be able to get quality field tested items at a reasonable price. Get back to your budget. Stretch your dollar a little further. And That's you get right. $20 off every $100 or more purchase. Yep. And make sure you sign up for their Buyers Club as well. Their Buyers Club will get you additional savings as well as free shipping on any item over $49. 
and we appreciate Sarah Mack for taking the questions and keeping us at least somewhat in line. And we really appreciate Robbie Wheaton for being here. Uh, check out his YouTube channel, uh, Robbie Wheaton, or you can put in Wheaton Arms. We'll have a link down below in the description. Uh, and a, a great perspective on things. Uh, again, 20 years as a gunsmith and has a lot of not a lot of knowledge. Also, WheatonArms.com, yep. a lot of great Glock aftermarket parts, and he does custom gun work, and we really appreciate it. Thank you much. Yeah, man. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys for being here. Absolutely. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic.